Okay, so today we're going to learn about enzymes. And before I really get into what enzymes do, I want to tell you what they kind of remind me of. They remind me of this game that I used to love to play as a kid. It's called Pac-Man. If you have not ever played Pac-Man, it might be because I'm kind of old, but you need to go play it. They often have it on Google as like a little side game, and it is one of the best games, I, I promise you, Pac-Man. But anyway, enzymes remind me of Pac-Man because they have this really specific shape. See, if you've ever played the game, Pac-Man is this little guy that goes around, and he's just got like this mouth, and he eats these little pebbles, but it's kind of like a perfectly fit mouth for the little pebble that he eats. Well, enzymes have a perfect shape for whatever they're going to fit. And whatever they fit into their perfect shape here is called a substrate. A substrate is something that the enzyme can either build up or break down. Enzymes can do either one. But again, I like remembering that they have this special shape. And so I like to tell myself, okay, enzymes like Pac-Man. P for Pac-Man, P for protein. Enzymes are made of protein. Okay, they're not made of lipids or carbs or nucleic acids. If those don't mean anything to you, don't worry. We're going to get to them soon. But just remember that enzymes are made of protein. Now, enzymes have the ability to speed up reactions. So the reactions, it's not that they wouldn't happen in the first place without the enzyme. It's just that they would, be, they would speed up because of the enzyme's presence. So that just helps them go faster than they would go. Okay, so if you've ever played the game Pac-Man, there are these ghosts that go after the Pac-Man. And when the ghost touches the Pac-Man, the Pac-Man kind of shrivels up and it makes a sound. It goes, near, 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 near. And the Pac-Man, you know, just kind of, I guess it disintegrates. Well, in enzymes, it's a little more tricky than that. Um, we don't really have things that go after enzymes, but we do have things that are very bad for enzymes. And two of the main things that really affect enzymes are temperature, and pH. Both of those things, very bad for enzymes. pH are things like um, when we are talking about acids and bases, okay, they have this pH level that is not ideal for the enzyme. Temperature is when we're talking about really hot temperatures or really cold temperatures. Now, when what they do to the enzyme, we don't want to say they hurt the enzyme or eat the enzyme or destroy the enzyme. We really want to say they denature the enzyme. When you think of the word denature, you can think of the word destroy. It basically means that enzyme, its shape is no longer any good to ever match with that poor substrate ever again. So what does this have to do with anything? Are we just learning this for a test? No, this is actually a very important concept. Let me give you a real world example. Say you have a friend that says that they're lactose intolerant. What does that really mean? Well, somebody who's lactose intolerant, you might have observed that they cannot drink milk. They do not have the ability to drink milk, or if they do, they have to be really careful about how much they drink because it makes them really sick. So why is that? Well, milk has a sugar in it called lactose. And people that can't break down lactose, they're missing an enzyme, an enzyme called lactase. Now, you might notice that lactase ends in ACE. Many enzymes end in ACE, A-S-E. Uh, lactase is one of those types of enzymes. So because they don't have this lactase, this little Pac-Man enzyme, they can't break down the lactose. And so the lactose kind of builds up, and it makes them feel very, very sick. That is a great example, real-world example, of enzymes. I hope that you will stay tuned and listen to more of our videos, and please always stay curious.